Hi there, I'm Rebecca Russell. I'm a royal expert and commentator, as well as the royal correspondent for my London news. So I'll do a proper introduction to video at a later date, but for now, let me just say, our journey together will be nothing short of thrilling. It'll be a journey through a thousand years of royal history, so stay tuned. For our first foray into this YouTube world, I look to none other than our Queen for inspiration. Now you may think that the Queen, being the Queen, was born in a castle or a palace, but she wasn't. She was born in a normal London street. I say normal, but it was still a multi-storey townhouse in the middle of London, one of the most expensive areas, Mayfair. But given that some of her ancestors were born in the likes of Windsor Castle, the Tower of London, Kensington Palace, Buckingham Palace, being born in a normal street, as you would say, was quite rare. So that normal place was 17 Bruton Street in Mayfair, just round the corner from Berkeley Square. So I'll see you there. So in terms of getting to Bruton Street, you walk down, um, you walk down Berkeley Street and then you turn into Bruton Street by the Bentley showroom. And it's a very busy road, interestingly, and there's lots of security, so it's making me quite nervous, I won't lie to you. Anyone walking down Bruton Street might not clock the huge royal links in this area, but if you were to walk on up to number 17, you will see this sign. Yeah, I'll just think about So the present Queen, her full name is Elizabeth Alexandra Mary and she was born here at 17 Bruton Street on the 21st of April 1926. She was born at the house of her maternal grandparents, so the Earl and Countess of Strathmore and Kinghorn. At the time of her birth, her grandfather, King George V, was king along with his Queen, Queen Mary, and her uncle Edward, who would become Edward VIII, who later abdicated, was first in line to the throne, so when she was born, she was behind her father, who was then Prince Albert, and he became King George VI. So Princess Elizabeth was born here, as the, and she was the first child of Elizabeth the Bow's Lion, who was the Queen Mother later, and King George VI. Her younger sister, Margaret Rose, Princess Margaret, Countess of Snowdon, was born in Glamis Castle in Scotland. The family then relocated to 145 Piccadilly in Mayfair, which is about a 15 minute walk from here and we'll head there in a minute. So this street is obviously in Mayfair, which is a very wealthy area of London. I mean, I literally just have to turn to the other side of the road and I can see fashion house after designer, after car showroom. It's a very expensive area, so absolutely no surprise that there was a huge townhouse for members of the Earth for members of the nobility who would one day become linked to the royals. The location we're in is 145 Piccadilly, which is now the Park Lane Mayfair Hotel. So to the royal family, this house was 145, that's everything, and there was no security, residents, any members of the local community could just walk up and press. There was one of two doorbells, there was one called Visitors and there was just one called House, so anyone could ring the bell, there was no security, can you even imagine that today? would never happen nowadays, especially after uh, Michael Fagan breaking into Buckingham Palace. So the family moved here, the family being the Duke and Duchess of York, so future King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, moved here with Princess Elizabeth when she was 14 months old. They returned from a six month trip in New Zealand and Australia. They returned after that six month trip and moved to 145 Piccadilly and posed on the balcony with the 14th old princess to huge crowds. Um, while the Duke and Duchess of York were on that tour, the care of Princess Elizabeth had been in the hands of Queen Mary and King George V, as well as Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother's parents, the Earl and Countess of Strathmore and Kinghorn, whose house we were just at on Bruton Street. 
Now the interest in the Royals was at fever pitch at that point because of young Princess Elizabeth. It was hope, prosperity, everything. What's interesting of course is that when Elizabeth was born in 1926, she was third in line to the throne as I previously mentioned. And her uncle, who would go on to become Edward VIII, the king who abdicated um, so he could marry Wallace Simpson in 1936, he was frequently round at 145 playing cards with his brother, um, Prince Albert. Interest only continued to grow in the family after Princess Margaret was born. The family, the York family as they were known, came to live back at 145 and they lived here up until the abdication of Edward VIII. So at the time, 1936, the Princess Elizabeth was 10 years old and that's when they moved to Buckingham Palace as her father was to sit on the throne as King George VI. We will go to Buckingham Palace soon because it's only a stone's throw away from here. And we're back. So now we're in Green Park which is the park next to Buckingham Palace. I don't know if you can see it through the trees, just there. Um, we are also Clarence House, St. James's Palace, Marlborough House, Lancaster House, they're all behind there in Pall Mall. And Buckingham Palace is where the royal family moved. I mean, by royal family, I mean King George VI, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret moved there. Buckingham Palace, the official residence of the monarch in 1936 after the abdication of Edward VIII. Prior to their move here, of course, we were just in 145 Piccadilly, which was the London base of the York family. Their other bases include um, Royal Lodge on the Windsor Estates, which is also where Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother died in 2002. Buckingham Palace is probably the most recognisable icon of the royal family and I'll be doing a video uh, explaining the brief history as well as maybe an even more in-depth history because there's a lot to go through, lots has happened there. So the princess lived here at Buckingham Palace from 1936 to 1947 until she married Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark. The couple then lived in Malta while he was in the Navy. Once the family returned from Malta in 1952 as the King's house was, was worsening, they lived at Clarence House, which is just over the road there in Pall Mall. That's the current house of Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall. Shortly after the death of George VI, the family did attempt to make Clarence House their official residence and just have Buckingham Palace as the office. However, that didn't work. And so Buckingham Palace had to remain the official residence of the monarch. Ever since the Queen came to the throne in 1952 and had her coronation in 1953, she has lived at Buckingham Palace, which is just through there at... I'm just sat on the Canada Gate Memorial, just a bit further down you'd recognise the big, large, golden gates, and you can't see them there. So, to this day, Buckingham Palace remains the London residence of the monarch. The Queen, of course, owns several other official palaces and castles around the world, I mean, around the country. So you can just think of Balmoral Castle, which is where she spends the summer, or Sandringham, where she spends Christmas, or Windsor, of course, that thousand year old castle. So that's it. That's the video on Queen Elizabeth's childhood homes. I hope you enjoyed the tour from Bruton Street to 145 Piccadilly and finally to Buckingham Palace, where we still are. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share everything. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.